So thanks uh, for the introduction, uh, Feram. So as Feram said, I'm going to present today my, the research that I've been pro working on here in scope of the larger project on um, electoral uh, integrity. So in particular, I look at um, citizens' opinion about electoral integrity, like what citizens themselves think about the how fair the elections are held in their uh, country. Because I think that um, citizens and voters and constituents are at the end key actors in the electoral process. So if you want to get a better understanding of democracy and about how um, democracy works in countries, it's also important to know uh, citizens' uh, opinions. So the main research question is, to what extent does mass media use influence citizens' accurate assessment of the quality of elections? So I want to look at how accurate the opinions of citizens are about the, the elections and how that is influenced by their uh, media use. And in general, media are considered as an important source for people to learn about politics, to form their opinion, so it's expected that media use will influence their uh, perceptions of uh, electoral integrity. So there is some uh, debate in the literature to what extent media helps or influences political knowledge. You have the more critical ones, the more negative ones, like uh, uh, Putnam, who is very critical about the influence of, uh, of media on knowledge on political and civic participation. It's saying that the media is increasingly uh, person-oriented, increasingly sensational, celebrity-oriented, and uh, focuses too much also on uh, on their entertainment or their entertaining role. Other scholars, by contrast, uh, focus very much on the influence that media have on gaining political knowledge, so really the positive effect, and that it's an important source where we people read about politics, read about what is going on in the world, and that it makes them more uh, knowledgeable about for politics the more they um, read or use uh, media. Now, some have also highlighted difference between different types of media. For example, in, some have shown that the use of TV has a less positive effect compared with uh, newspaper uh, reading. Um, and also uh, recently, in the last two decades, we've seen a growing importance of, uh, of the internet, which is now this an important uh, source of political participation, of political information for many uh, people. And it is a, way, um, a media source which is more interactive than the traditional ones. It's, it allows uh, people to engage directly with one another, with different uh, sources also, from all over the world without any uh, geographical boundaries. So people get a lot of information on, uh, on the internet. It, is a, it has a very international and open character compared with the more national media sources like uh, newspaper, uh, radio and, uh, and so on which are generally more localized, more uh, nationalized. So as such, the internet expands the information many people uh, get and offers new possibilities for political learning for uh, people. So the hypotheses deriving from these ideas are then that the intensity of informational use, so I will really focus on informational use, will be positively related to accuracy of perceptions of electoral integrity. So the more intense people use media, the more likely that they will be to have an accurate idea about the elections in their uh, country. And given the character of new media, and in particular uh, the internet, I expect intensity of uh, new media use to be stronger positively related than the effect of traditional uh, media. Now, so far I've only talked about overall effects that I expect of uh, the intensity of media use, but I also expect it to be conditional depending on the context in which uh, citizens use the media, and in particular the freedom of press. Um, so different countries around the globe have uh, censored media or controlled the media, like uh, Burma, Russia, China, uh, and so on. And the information they provide to their readers is very one-sided, it's more limited also than in countries where you have more uh, freedom of, uh, of press. 
the state-controlled media in those countries where the media are censored. They offer that one side I, um, information, general positive about the regime, positive about uh, the elections, even though international um, human rights observers may consider the, the elections as, uh, as unfair. In general, they, those regimes that um, censor the media will still uh, make sure that the information that the people get will be uh, positive about the regime and be about the election. So as a result, those media will have a less positive effect on the accuracy or that people have about uh, the elections. Um, which is not a case where you have independent media, where you have more two-sided information and more accurate information than about uh, uh, politics and about uh, the elections in particular, and where also the media will take more up on a role of watchdog and uh, follow uh, politics and ensure the accountability of also the uh, decision makers. Now, while some regimes also censor and limit access to the internet, again, China is a good example, Pakistan, uh, Burma, this is general much harder to do than traditional media, than, for example, a TV or uh, newspapers. So it offer, internet there offers them the possibility for uh, citizens across the globe to get information that they might not get in the traditional uh, national uh, media. So it does allow citizens to be informed by a broad uh, spectrum of sources, also offering very diverse opinions and, uh, and information. So in countries in particular where uh, traditional media are uh, censored and centralized and influenced by government control, internet may offer an alternative with broader information compared with the national uh, media. So in such context, the internet may have a more positive effect on the accuracy of the perceptions of electoral integrity in contrast to co uh, countries where there is an open um, uh, media um, planning or where the, there is no censoring, where also the traditional media offer the information that people will find on um, on the internet. So in some, then the second set of hypotheses are that the intensity of new media use will have a stronger positive effect in countries with less freedom of press, whereas the intensity of traditional media will have a more positive uh, strong effect in countries with high levels of freedom of, uh, of press. Now to test my hypothesis, I use um, the World Value Survey, the latest wave, and then I combine it with an expert survey organized within the Electoral um, Integrity Project. In total, I have uh, 12, more than 12,000 individuals for 13 countries. So the countries um, are based, are those for which uh, I have data on electoral integrity, both in the World Value Survey and in the uh, Expert Survey, because I combine both uh, data sets. Um, so then the different measures, I'll go briefly uh, through them. The dependent variable is the absolute difference between citizens and experts' opinion about electoral integrity. So the question has been asked both in the expert survey and in the world value survey, and I take the absolute uh, difference. So it's not about whether per, um, experts have a higher or a better or, or more positive about the electoral integrity compared with um, the citizens, it's more about the difference. So the assumption is that the larger the difference, the, more, the less accurate uh, citizens' uh, opinions are. And of course, one can question, do we know that, uh, whether the experts have the right between Breck and uh, ID or the right uh, opinion? But compared with um, different other resources, it seems that the experts' op um, uh, the experts' data give a very or a quite accurate idea about uh, electoral integrity in a, in a country. So I use a sum scale. It's um, different items that are again both included in the World Value Survey and in the Expert Survey to measure uh, electoral integrity. And as you can see, the um, internal validity measured by Combrax Alpha is relatively high, both in the Expert Survey and in the World uh, Value Survey. 
So to give you an idea about the dependent variable in the different countries, this uh, graph shows you, without turning it into an absolute um, value, the difference between experts and citizens. And as you can see, in many countries, there is quite a difference between um, the experts and the, and the citizens. So when the bars are above zero, it means that um, experts have a more positive opinion about the electoral integrity. When the bar is below zero, it means that citizens have a more uh, positive opinion about uh, the electoral integrity. And as you can see in Australia, there is almost no difference between citizens and the experts. So there is the more the most accurate ID people make about um, the quality of the the elections. It's also relatively small in the Netherlands and um, Pakistan and Ghana. So we both have some more established and uh, more developing uh, democracies. Uh, people seem to have the less accurate opinion or the difference between um, citizens measured or included in the World Value Survey and experts is largest in Azerbaijan, Malaysia and, uh, and Mexico. In Mexico, the experts have a more positive opinion about the elections compared with uh, the citizens. It's the other way around in Azerbaijan and uh, Malaysia. So then turning to the main explanatory variable, which is uh, intensity of informational use of media. So it really, the question in the uh, World Value Survey is to what extent respondents use uh, various sources of um, media to learn about what is going on in the country and in the world. So it's really informational use of the media, not media use in general that would also include like entertain for entertainment. And so it's the intensity and whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, less than monthly and never. But the variable was recorded so that a higher value refers to a more intense uh, use. I distinguished four different types of media, TV, radio, printed media, which combines printed magazines and daily newspaper and new media, internet. And um, media should be um, email. Um, so whereas my hypothesis focused more on the difference between new media and traditional media, I thought it would be interesting to also make the difference between the traditional media as there may still be differences between different sources of uh, traditional uh, media. So the contextual variable is freedom of press. I uh, used data from the Freedom of House published in 2013, referred to 2012. So it assesses the degree of um, uh, print, broadcast and internet freedom in uh, every country in the world. So in the next step I might also check the other measures and to see whether they have the same effect or also disaggregate uh, the global uh, index. And then I include a battery of uh, control variables. I think most of them are quite uh, straightforward. These are variables which have found to be um, related to political knowledge, uh, perception of electricity, electoral integrity, and our media uh, use. The most important or the most less, least common might be interpersonal communication. And the idea is that people don't only learn from media, but also from discussing politics with family, friends, colleagues, and so on. So that's what that um, variable uh, refers to. Now, before turning to some multivariate analysis, these are some, and I hope that it will be a little bit clear, that these are some uh, descriptive analysis. And the idea is that I wanted to look at co bivariate correlations between media use in the different countries and um, accuracy of perceptions of electoral integrity. So I've listed all the countries according to level of freedom with Rwanda at the left with the lowest level of freedom, uh, the Netherlands at the right in each figure with the highest level of um, freedom of, uh, of press. And uh, what you see, so the trend line then shows to what extent there is indeed a link between the correlation of um, intensity of media use and accuracy of, uh, of perceptions. And overall, we see a positive trend, so meaning that where there's more freedom of press, 
correlations between intensity of use of media and accuracy of uh, perceptions of electoral integrity is uh, higher. This trend is particularly outspoken for uh, TV, which is the um, on the top, the right uh, figure, and there you see the strongest um, uh, slope, the strongest uh, trend line. It's also quite obvious uh, for um, the printed media, which is the left, left uh, top uh, figure. It's less outspoken for uh, radio, the left uh, uh, figure at the bottom, and for the new uh, media. So we do see some um, confirmation of the expectation that indeed the um, uh, effect of media use is stronger in uh, the more uh, freedom the, the press is, uh, which is particularly the case for printed media and uh, TV. But in contrast to the expectation that I had formulated, um, the use of internet is not um, negatively related to freedom of press. There's only a minor uh, positive effect. But of course, these are only uh, descriptive uh, analyses, only give um, some bivariate uh, information. So turning to the multivariate results, and I do uh, multi-level analysis because I have individuals nested in the, in the countries, and also some basic um, analysis performing a baseline model without any controls also uh, confirmed that the multi-level analysis would be a most appropriate way to analyze uh, the data. So in particular, I did form two models, a base model, just direct effects, and then an interaction model to test the conditional effects of media use depending on the freedom of, uh, of press. So the first model shows that there is no uh, overall effect of printed media nor from new media use on uh, perceptions of electoral integrity and the accuracy thereof, but there is a negative effect of TV use and a positive one of uh, the use of uh, uh, radio. So in contrast to the expectation, there is no overall positive effect and also there is no clear cut difference between traditional media and new media in their effect of uh, accuracy of um, electoral integrity perceptions. Now the second model then includes uh, interaction uh, effects. And before running the model, I ran some separate models for each uh, media source separately to see and to investigate where indeed there is an interaction effect between media use and freedom of press. And I could also only find one for printed media and TV. So those are only the, also the only interaction that were uh, introduced in the um, eventual um, interaction model. And as you can see, so there is positive, a slight positive interaction effect between printed media and freedom of press, a more uh, stronger effect uh, interaction between TV use and uh, freedom of press, and both indicate that the use of those traditional media is stronger in um, the more uh, the higher the levels of freedom of press, which is in line with the, with the expectation. So that in countries with higher levels of freedom of press, traditional media will have a more positive effect on the accuracy of uh, perceptions of electoral integrity. And these uh, figures illustrate also the combined impact of the use of TV and printed media and freedom of, uh, of press. And again, it shows that the higher the levels of freedom of press, the more um, accurate in general or the stronger the effect of TV use and media use on citizens' uh, accuracy of uh, perceptions of electoral uh, integrity. So overall, then, I think that the uh, presented evidence stresses the different roles that the media play and that different media also play in spurring public opinion and political uh, knowledge. Those who listen to the radio most intensively are most likely to have an accurate opinion about uh, the quality of the elections in their country compared with those who don't listen to the radio. TV and the intensity of TV use, on the other hand, as a negative effect. And uh, printed media and new media have no independent effect on uh, the accuracy of citizens' perceptions of the quality of elections. 
Second, I show that there is a conditional effect of the intensity of informational use of media on accuracy of perceptions of electoral integrity according to countries' level of freedom of press, which is particularly the case for uh, TV use and also to a lesser extent to uh, printed uh, media. So we do see confirmation of the idea that in countries where citizens get one-sided uh, information, centralized and generally also often used for propagandistic uh, purposes, it really decreases the likelihood that people make an accurate assessment of the uh, elections held in their uh, countries. However, in contrast to what I had expected, there is no conditional effect when it comes to um, the use of the, the internet. So overall, the findings presented in the study suggest that there are diverse effects of different media and that some of them are also conditional. But as always, a great deal uh, still uh, remains to be, uh, to be learned. And I think one puzzling um, finding is the different effect of TV and radio, which are seen as both traditional media, also generally though in countries where there is censoring or where there is limited freedom, that both are uh, censored. So it's a bit puzzling why the one has a positive effect, the other one uh, a negative. And more information about citizens' media use, like what in programs they listen to and so on, would be uh, interesting. Or also the news coverage on the radio and TV in different uh, countries would be necessary to get a better understanding of uh, that. And then there is also the issue of causality. Since I use cross-sectional uh, data, it's hard to trace changes in citizens' perceptions depending on their use of uh, media. So I, they, I'm not able to say a lot about the causality of the, of the results, but still I think that the cross-sectional data used here are useful to make the claim that there is a uh, association or an association between the intensity of media use and the accuracy of uh, citizens' uh, perceptions. Thank you. Yeah.